what is up guys this is Shiro back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Octavio is built which is 3.3 version and this is based on official Android 12 and here we get two separate versions one includes the gapps and one does not as usual I have flashed the gapps included variant if you don't know how to flash this from you can check out the guide from the description and all the important links of the recovery and stuff will be present in the description so do not worry I have used the latest orange fox recovery the official stable one but these are the recoveries which are mentioned I'll also link this post if you need that but here this is a uh, Android 11 firmware based ROM again so right now let me actually show you the home screen first this is how the home screen looks like to the left of the home screen we get the Google's discover page and here the scrolling is pretty fine it's normal and swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you to the quick setting panel and swiping up anywhere in the home screen gets you to the app drawer and the widgets over here are working totally fine we can also add the Android 12 widgets let me actually show you so here inside clock widget let me actually add this one if I try to add this one over here so let's go with this one so as you can see it actually adapts to the color of the wallpaper and everywhere the accent color adapts to the color of the wallpaper it looks beautiful and yes you can tap on this clock widget and that will actually get you into the clock app and as you can see the animations are very fluid and snappy no issues whatsoever that I have faced with the animations the overall smoothness of this ROM is just amazing. By the way, talking about the stock launcher, we get the launcher launcher over here by default and you get a lot of customizations over here if you go into the general settings or if you go into the home screen settings and stuff, you will see huge amount of customizations are there. I'm not going to show you everything, but let me actually show you the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is present and this is actually working perfectly fine. This is how the always on display looks like. Let me tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks. This is a very fast and snappy unlocking experience. I have had no issues so far with the unlocking and locking the device. As you can see, it works 100% of the time. Very fluid animations everywhere while even unlocking. And of course, you can search for any particular apps on this app drawer. No issues with that. Talking about the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like. Yes, it does look a little bit different if you look up close. This data and stuff has a little bit of border and they look pretty beautiful, I would say. If you tap on this over here, it doesn't do anything. It actually doesn't go anywhere. As you can see, I am tapping on the clock icon over here. It doesn't actually do anything. This is actually weird. It should actually get you into the calendar or the clock app or the battery settings. But that actually does not happen over here which is kind of a bummer I would say but yeah overall the quick setting panel looks dope of Android 12 again but here it has a slight different touch. The texts are a little smaller than I have seen in other ROMs I would say and here actually you can customize but I have added couple of toggles that we actually show you from this edit icon you can add even more toggles over here if you want just the internet toggle and stuff you can add that one or if you want to add some more app specific stuff you can add those from right here. And we also have the power menu over here. I have enabled the advanced reboot. That's why you are seeing inside advanced, we have the recovery option. So you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here. You can go into the settings from here. We have the auto brightness option from right here, but we also get the dark theme, the screen recorder and stuff. And here we do have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. No issues with that. Let me show you some more stuff. The always on display option is again there. Then we have the hotspot, the do not disturb, the data saver and the nearby share night light. Night light is actually working fine. If I enable that, if you're noticing, the display has turned to yellowish and we have the do not disturb. This is the sound toggle actually. If you tap and hold on it, this is how the volume panel looks like. Yes, this volume panel has a different kind of touch. Let me actually show you from right here. If you're noticing the background of this volume panel stays gray, looks good, I would say. Then we have the screenshot option. Then we have the heads up disabling option, the home or device controls. Then DC dimming, you can turn it on or off from right here. Also, we have the high brightness mode. With that, you can enable the outdoor brightness mode. This is actually really, really bright over here. Whenever you're tapping on the high brightness, the display goes really bright. Now talking about the stock camera over here, I would say yes, this ROM I think does not come with a stock camera because I have installed this Gcam Go separately and yes, there is the uninstall option if you're noticing. So yeah, the Gcam Go I have installed and this is actually working perfectly fine. I'll link it below if you want this one and as you can see the front camera and stuff everything is working fine with the video mode then even with the portrait mode the front camera should work fine too. So yeah, no issues whatsoever with the Gcam Go but with the normal Unix version of the Gcam I have seen some problems while switching the lenses and stuff but overall I would say this Gcam Go takes basic pictures normally as you can see there is no shutter lag at all as you can see takes the picture quite fast so yeah the Gcam Go is working perfectly fine but here I have also installed this Gcam 2.6 Unix version but with this again the front camera is working 
but the problem happens whenever you switch to the other lenses let me show you as you can see right now the gcam yearning version has completely four stop so if i want to fix that i have to clear the data of that one so that's how it is as of right now yes on evolution x the gcam yearning version works perfectly but here it doesn't work properly Talking about the about section inside Android version, this is how it looks like. We have the 3.3 Octavio S version and we have the device resolution and stuff and other specifications. But if you scroll down more, we have the maintainer's name being Mishra and we have the device name as Redmi K20 Pro. The security patch here is latest of January 5th, 2022 and we have the Soviet star kernel as the default kernel and there is the Android 12 mentioned over here. And if you tap and hold on it, you will get this clock and if you make it 12 o'clock, then you will see the Android 12's this kind of Easter egg and it, yeah, it looks pretty beautiful. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. We also have a system updater or OT updater, but as of right now, this is the latest build. That's why it shows that update is not available. So yeah, right now, this is the 3.3 version. You can try again to search it, but yeah, this is how the updater app actually looks like. Also, it shows the change logs over here. So that's great. You can see the change logs right here. In the gesture settings, we have the swipe rotate screenshot and yes, this actually works fine. We have the share, edit and delete option. Also, if you want to go into a particular app, then if you take a screenshot, there we get the capture more option. If you click on capture more, then you can select much more area of the screenshot. Then you can edit it out with the markup app. And over here, you can add text or just mark some stuff just like this. If you're noticing, you can change the colors and stuff. Really handy features everywhere, even while taking a screenshot. We go into the one-handed mode and yes, right now I have it set to full screen into reach. That's why you can use the one-handed mode properly. No issues with that. Let me go back from here. We have the press and hold power button for assistant. Then we have the system navigation gestures here. We have the two button and three button navigation gestures. Also inside full screen gesture settings, if you scroll down more, we have the gesture nav bar length. Then we have the gesture radius. You can customize both over here, the length and the radius. So that's great. Also, we have the swipe to invoke assistant. So you can swipe up from these corners. And as you can see, the Google Assistant is working properly. Let me try the voice trigger. So as you can see, OK Google is actually disabled over here. So that's why it's not working for some reason. But yeah, you can definitely anytime swipe from these corners to actually get into the Google Assistant. But the OK Google voice trigger is kind of disabled here. We have the haptic feedback option. Then if you scroll down more, we have the full screen gestures option. Then inside advanced gestures, we have the long swipe action and stuff. This is the extended swipe action. You can enable whatever you want to and customize it. We also have the quickly open camera feature. You can use that if you want to. Then inside pop-up camera settings, we have the camera LED. Then we have the front camera raise dialog. And we also have the pop-up camera sound effects. I have it on disabled. You can also calibrate the front camera if you want to. Let me go back and this is how the settings panel looks like. It looks a little different. It has all the icons on the right side if you're noticing and there is written which is which. And yes, the settings panel has a little bit of difference from other custom ROMs. As you can see, there is a search option. Then there is the settings big icon and there is a funny little text right there below the settings. And we also have the Octavi Lab. There we have all the customizations. And this ROM has huge amount of customizations. Just notice how much options are there. In the status bar, we have the status bar items here. We have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. Yes, you can skip this customization part if you don't want to see it from the scroll bar. And we have the clock and date. Then we can customize it to have the AM, PM, then the date even. You can like have the normal font size, even the date format you can choose from right here like this. Then we have the battery settings. We get these many battery icons. And yeah, we don't have any big battery icons like big circle or big dotted circle, but we do have the icon right or left. I have been using it with the icon right. And we have the battery percentage inside the icon next to the icon or the hidden option. Then we have the left battery text and even the battery bar you can enable if you want to. Let me go back. We have the carrier label, the Bluetooth battery status and the show notification count, colored status bar icons. Then we have the vault icon enabling option and even the VO Wi-Fi icon you can customize from here. Padding of the status bar, you can customize that too. Let me go to the quick setting panel now. Here we have the vibrate on toggle touch, edit icon, then the quick setting, quick pull down. And we have the brightness slider options so you can have this brightness slider on the bottom or you can choose not to have it in the like short quick setting panel and when you expand it only then it will show up and stuff these kind of settings are there all these things you can read them out and we have the animation styles then the animation duration tile animation interpolator and stuff let me go back to the notifications here we have the heads up disabling option then we also have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect and we have this make heads up less annoying option even the ambient edge lighting option is there 
let me go into the octavi theming here we have the monet customization so you can use a custom color if you want that but right now i have been using the normal monet theme engine that's why this accent color i mean is from the wallpaper itself so whatever wallpaper i apply the accent color will be applied from that wallpaper let me go back we have the headline and body fonts and we get plethora of fonts as you can see huge amount of customizations are there in terms of fonts even the icon packs are there and we have the signal kind of options and even the wi-fi options are there let me go back to the volume panel over here we have the volume steps and you can customize the volume steps from here music control and stuff is there let me go to the navigation and here we have the nav bar customization then we have the long press power button to toggle torch let me go to the gestures here we have the status bar and lock screen double tap to sleep that's it and we have the power menu here we have the advanced reboot options you can enable it or disable it if you want that let me scroll down more we have the lock screen customizations we have the always on display scheduling option then we have the lock screen charging info and we have the fingerprint vibration and screen of fod is also there and the udfps icon picker is also there so you can choose from these many icons in android 12 roms i haven't seen this being added but right now we do have this udfps icon picker in this octavi os this is great that we have those android 11 kind of customizations back in android 12 also we have the animations so you can enable a udfps animation and over here you can choose from huge amount of animations okay so to actually choose that we have to pick a udfps icon picker so i have chosen this one but you can also go with this one or something like that then if you choose this bloom one let me actually show you right now if i double tap this is how it actually locks the device and right now if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see the animations are there so let me do this right now just notice the animation while unlocking the device so yeah the animations does work over here but you have to go with a different icon of the fingerprint scanner let me go back we have the misc settings here we have the toast tap icon the roaming indicator small mobile data type icon and the show call strength icons etc that's it pretty much about the customizations now here inside wallpapers and styles we have the dark theme option and we have the app grid option of course we get up to 5 by 5 grid only and you can change the wallpapers from here i have been using it with this kind of wallpaper over here this is a normal stock kind of wallpaper of google here in the battery settings this is how it looks like and yes we do not see any like more information like the battery charging cycle and stuff all those things are missing but talking about the battery life yes i don't have a sim card in this device yet but normally while using the device i have seen the battery life over here is just way better than roms like evolution x yes i admit that i have been using the evolution x quite a lot on the redmi k20 pro but on this rom the battery life has improved let me show you why i am saying that in the aku battery app just take a look at the screen on time over here the screen on actually shows eight hours and five minutes well it may not be true but you can definitely get seven to seven and a half hours of screen on time right now on the redmi k20 pro with the octavio os if you have decent kind of battery health left i have about 600 plus cycles on this battery and with that i can say this is a really good screen on time and yes the ideal drain is very very less on this particular rom so that is what i have been liking on this octavio os the battery life over here should be really really amazing and this is how it looks like while charging the device in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive or auto brightness in the live display we have the color calibration you can choose to have the rgb control and we have the reading mode then we have the lock screen customization if you scroll down more we have the always on display disabling option wake screen for notification and stuff is there and we also have that wake up on charge then we have the screen timeout here we also have a screen attention mode let me scroll down we have the dark theme and once you enable the dark theme as you can see there is no option to actually change the pitch black option or stuff like that those are not there but yes the dark theme works properly no issues with that i have used the device with the dark theme looks beautiful we have the font size the display size the dpi customization the nightlight and stuff is there and the colors are set to boosted over here you can again choose the rgb control over here let me scroll down we have the combined signal icons again and the pocket detection is also there the double tap to wake is there wake up on plug is there then there is a display cutout for some reason and we have the custom display settings from there you can enable the disc dimming and the high brightness or the daylight brightness mode in the sound settings we have this media call etc volume controls if you scroll down we have the adaptive sound then we have the vibrate for calls then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option then also we have the notification sound and stuff and the screenshot shutter sound etc you can disable inside me audio enhancer we have this headphones choosing option i have been using it with the youth edition and with that the sound quality via the headphone jack again is amazing 
and even with Bluetooth, it has been really, really great. It supports the Qualcomm Aptex HD audio that I have on the Boat Rocker 335. No issues with Bluetooth audio, even for calling. And we have even the enable hi-fi option if you want to use that. And inside security, we don't have much things. We only have the pin option, then you can go into settings. But there is no always unlock with the Figment scanner or there is no face unlock or app lock. Those things are yet to be added on the Android 12 ROMs. And inside Google Photos, it actually shows that it is backing up from this pixel for free and unlimited it is. So yeah, you do get the unlimited Google Photos backup, I think, over here, but I'm not really sure about that. Talking about a few more things, the safety net passes right out of the box, so you can use banking apps like Google Pay over here without any issues. Also, the DNA Info stays L1 over here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Now, talking about the performance, I'll show you some apps that I have opened already, if they are in memory or not. By the way, I'll also show you the benchmarks on the screen, so do notice that. And here, as you can see, the Chrome is still in memory. And here, the Facebook app still in memory. And we have the Twitter still in memory. Play Store also in the RAM. YouTube is also in the RAM. And Instagram is still in memory. Google Home is still in memory. YouTube Music, again, is still in the RAM. So yeah, the RAM management over here is great, no issues whatsoever, with a little bit of customization. So in terms of daily driving performance, you should not be having any issues with the RAM management or stuff like that. The phone does not slow down and yes, it handles all the apps with ease, no issues whatsoever. So again, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the Octave OS on the Redmi K20 Pro. I feel this is a really amazing option for the Redmi K20 Pro. And yes, there are other Android 12 ROMs too, but this Octave OS this time, I have been pretty much liking. And the battery life again on this ROM is special because the battery life over here is just great. I have been having about seven and a half hours of screen runtime with this particular ROM. So that's what makes a difference for me at least on the Redmi K20 Pro for this Octave OS. And I really, really like it. So again, let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Rito from KDNTX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.